Okay, there we go. Sorry, I had to turn on the microphone there. Hello to you all. Welcome to the Real English Party. Real English Party Online Afternoon Book Club. Today we are reading from the Stephen King novel, Fairy Tale. I apologize. Um, today's lesson will be a little short, actually. We probably, not only will we not go for the full hour, but we may not even make it to 30 minutes. Uh, and the reason for that is because, one, uh, I'm, I'm getting over a cold, and so my voice is not very strong, and it probably can't stand up to doing a full hour of reading if I want to be able to do the book club with members tonight. So I do want to rest my voice up so that I can actually host the, the event that actually has members joining it. And so then I guess what will happen is, you know, we'll just do maybe 20 minutes here uh, uh, for that reason. And also because I'm having my smartphone phone serviced, uh, uh, I cracked. And so I've got to get back to Machida by about 4, 4.30 so that I can pick it up. Hopefully the battery has been replaced and it will be working fine. I need it very much for work. So that's very important. And I need to have that in time for this evening's book club as well. So that's two reasons. And actually the third reason uh, is also that uh, it, probably, it will probably take us about 20 minutes, less than 30 minutes to finish this chapter. And then I would like to start off fresh next week with a new chapter. So we'll finish the chapter here, and then once this chapter is finished, we'll, we'll cut it short there. So uh, that probably won't take as much as 30 minutes. Hopefully it won't. And then, uh, then we'll, we'll continue on the next time. And so I apologize if my voice sounds a little hoarse. It doesn't feel bad at all. It's just that uh, it does come and go. So if I use it a lot, it kind of goes away. I was working in the kindergarten today and trying to sing songs, and by the end of it, my lesson, my voice was completely blown, which is why it sounds like this now. So I want to make sure that it's rested enough that I can do the host the book club for tonight. And then of course, tomorrow afternoon's book club as well. Okay, so where are we in Stephen King's fairy tale? From what I can recall, our hero, Charlie, is a badass. All right. Now, what does that mean? When we say a badass, that means a really tough guy, someone who you don't want to mess around with, He's able to really hurt you if he wants to. We know that Charlie was basically taken hostage uh, at gunpoint by that, uh, I've got the name of the person, but that short man who always says, ha ha. He was taken hostage because that man wanted to get the gold pedals the gold pellets, rather, that uh, Mr. Bowditch left in his closet in the safe. Uh, he was able to uh, base, basically overcome that guy uh, because he was a very small man and because, of course, Charlie's a very big guy and apparently very strong. He broke both of his arms, I believe, at the wrist, right? Both of his arms had been broken. Uh, uh, and uh, he took his gun from him, uh, gave it back to him and let him go on the promise that he would not return and he would not tell anyone. And of course, you know, it's possible that he will return and it's possible that he will tell someone, but he figured that the best way to handle it would be to let him go. He couldn't kill him, of course, although he considered it, and to let him go and let him go with a stern warning by breaking not only one of his arms, but both of his hand, arms at wrists, and then letting him climb the fence or throwing him over the fence, really, and letting him run away with his gun. So he let him take his gun and run away. Obviously, if his arms are broken, not much he can do with the gun anyway. He let him go. And uh, let's hope that that character does not return. Of course, I, if I know Stephen King, uh, most of the characters do appear recur. They don't usually appear in just one scene only. So I suspect we'll be seeing more of that character again. And at that time, we will remember his name. At this point, I forgot his name. So he did overcome his, his assailant, beat him up a bit, threw him out, let him get away. And then he went home and uh, ate a hearty meal because he was very hungry after that ordeal. Remember, this had all happened 
after he had taken the trip through the well of the world and gone to another world, met some otherworldly woman and talked with her and explored there and then came back. So it was quite a busy day, even though only a few hours had passed and Radar didn't seem to have missed him that much. But so much had happened, it was a very long, hard, busy day. So he's at home, and he's in his kitchen, and he's eating. All right? And that's where we begin part six. Okay? So let us begin. As I ate, I thought, if I was going to be gone with radar, I had to lay a false trail that would lead in some direction other than Mr. Bowditch's house. An idea came to me while I was going out to the garage, and I thought it would serve. It would have to. I got my dad's wheelbarrow and a bonus. On one of the shelves was a bag of calcium hydroxide, more commonly known as quicklime. And why did dad have that? You guessed it, roaches. Some in our basement, some in the garage. I put the bag in the wheelbarrow, then went into the house and showed Radar her niche. If I take you to the top of the hill, will you be good? She assured me with her eyes that she would. So I hooked her up and we walked to one sycamore, me pushing the wheelbarrow and she walking beside it. Mrs. Richland was back at her usual post and I half expected her to ask what all the rumpus was, what all the rumpus had been about earlier. I'm going to read that again from Ed one more time. And I half expected her to ask what all the rumpus have been all about early. And I and I and I half expected her to, one more time. And I half expected her to ask what all the rumpus had been about earlier. She didn't. Just asked if I was planning to do some more work around the house. I said I was. You're very good to do it. I suppose his estate will be putting it up for sale, won't they? Maybe the estate will even pay you, but I wouldn't count on it. Lawyers are stingy. I hope the new owners don't tear it down. It looks so much nicer now. Do you know who inherited it? I said I didn't. Well, if you happen to find out the asking price, let me know. We've been thinking about selling ourselves. We? suggested that there was a Mr. Richmond, who, who knew? I said I would be sure to in a pig's eye and rolled the wheelbarrow around back with the end of Raider's leash looped over my wrist. The old girl was moving well, but it wasn't a particularly long walk up the hill. Miles to the abandoned city though, she'd never make it. Radar was calmer this time, but as soon as I unhooked her leash, she went straight to the sofa bed in the living room, sniffed it over from end to end, and laid down beside it. I bought her a bowl of water, then went out to the shed with a bag of quicklime. I shook it over the remains of the cockroach and watched with some amazement as the decay sped up to a sprint. There was a hissing, bubbling sound. Vapor rose from the remains, which would soon be nothing but a puddle of lime slime. I picked up the revolver, took it back into the house, and put it in the safe. I saw a couple of pellets that had rolled away into a corner and dropped them into the bucket with the rest of the gold. Then I went downstairs. Radar was fast asleep. Good, I thought. Get all the sleep you can, because tomorrow is going to be a busy day for you, girl. Okay, let's stop there for a moment because this is a, a, a long section and I, I, do, I don't want to miss some terminology that I'd like to go over. Okay, so now it looks like he's taken the wheelbarrow to the shed in, in, uh, at Mr. Bowditch's house because he intends to, I guess, roll radar to the abandoned town in the other world. Basically, a wheelbarrow, if you don't know, is sort of like a a, a big cart, but it only has one wheel, not four. And you actually hold up one end and the other end has a wheel and it's got a big bucket so that you can carry things in it. It moves very, very 
uh, well because it's just one wheel, so it can take really sharp turns, but it's a bit unstable, so you know it's hard to keep it balanced. So he could actually put radar in that wheelbarrow and then throw him all the way to the abandoned town. Um, but that's not what I wanted to go over. I wanted to go over a phrase here, but just because I thought it would be useful. Maybe there's no way that you would understand this phrase. In a pig's eye. In a pig's eye. That's an idiom, obviously, and it's really not an idiom that you could just guess. But maybe in the context, you might be able to guess it. He said, I said I would be sure to do that. And then in parentheses, which means that just he was thinking, in a pig's eye, and rolled the wheelbarrow around back. So what was he thinking when he said that he was going to tell uh, the lady, I forget, I forget names very quickly, that he was going to tell the lady how much the house was going for, how much it would be selling for, or who inherited it. He was not going to give her that information, obviously, but he said that he would. So what does in a pig's eye mean? Right? Now, you could probably guess that in a pig's eye usually means something that maybe something to do with something that's not true, because he said something that definitely wasn't true. And that's actually what in a pig's eye means. It's an idiom that means that we don't believe what we are hearing or saying in a pig's eye. That's not true, right? Don't believe it. So it's 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 not often used anymore, but in this case and in this context, it's rightly used, right? He's saying to her, he will let her know, but he, he turns to his audience and says to us, in a pig's eye. It's almost like a wink, you know, to tell us that it's just a lie, it's not true, right? And so that was one phrase I wanted to let you on to, because that's something you can put into your your lexicon, put that in your notebook and try to use it. You know, you know, see, see how you could say it. Like folks, I might say maybe, you know, next year I'm going to travel all around the world in a pig's eye. And of course that means, of course that's not true. It's a joke or I'm just kidding or I'm lying, right? But let's move on, let's move on. Okay, so we get to the next page. This was already a busy one for me, and that was also good. It didn't keep me from thinking about the other world, the red poppies flanking the path, the shoe woman with almost no face, the glassy towers of the city. But staying busy probably kept me from having a delayed reaction to my close call with Christopher Polly, and it had been close, very. That's his name, yeah, Christopher Polly. I remember it now. Mm -hmm. The little bastard hadn't bothered with the stacks of reading matter in the hall between the kitchen and the back door in his hunt for the gold. I didn't bother with the books, but I spent an hour wheelbarrowing stacks of magazines conveniently done up in hay rope out to the shed. I stacked some over the remains of the, of the winch. I piled most of them near the well of the world. Then I went down the next time. Oh no, one more time. When I went down the next time, when we went down, I put the stacks on the boards and tried to cover the opening entirely. When I was done, I went back to the house and woke Radar. I, go, I gave her a treat from the pantry and walked her back home. I reminded myself to bring along her toy monkey tomorrow. She might want it once we got to where we were going. If, that was, she didn't fall off those stairs and pull me with her. If she'd go down the stairs at all. When I got back, I put Polly's P-22 auto, his, Polly's P-22 auto, his wallet, and some other stuff into my pack. Not much. I'd add more tomorrow from Mr. Bowditch's pantry and then sat down to write my, my father. I wanted to put it off and knew I couldn't afford to. That was a hard letter to write. Okay, so before we go on, it looks like, yeah, he didn't give Polly, the, 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 the bad man, he didn't give Polly his gun back. He actually kept his gun and his wallet. So he still has those things and he, he has put them into his pack. So that now those are his possessions, right? 
just to make sure you understand. He said, I wanted to put it off. So now if you're really keeping up with this level of reading, you probably know what put it off means. But just in case you don't, it is an idiom that which really means to wait to do something until a later time. It really is to procrastinate, actually. If you, if you don't know that word, then it's the same thing. It's to put something off until a later time because you don't want to do it. So he wanted to put it off, which means do it later, but he knew he couldn't afford to, which means he didn't have not enough money, but he didn't have enough time to put it off, right? He had to do it now. And it was a hard letter to write. So now let's see what he wrote. <clears throat> Dear dad, you're going to come back to an empty house because I've gone to Chicago with radar. I found someone on the internet who has had amazing success with renewing the health and vitality of aging dogs. I've known about this guy for some time, but didn't want to tell you because I know how you feel about quack cures. Maybe that's what this is, but I can easily afford $750, thanks to my inheritance. I won't tell you not to worry because I know you will, even though there's nothing to worry about. What I will tell you is, please don't try to fix your worry with a drink. If I came, ba if I came back and found you were boozing again, it would break my heart. Don't try to call me because I'm turning off my phone, on or off, wouldn't matter where I was going. I will be back if this works. I will be back with a brand new dog. Trust me, Dad, I know what I'm doing. Love, Charlie. Okay. Well, I hope I knew. I put the note in an envelope, wrote Dad on the front, and left it on the kitchen table. Then I opened my laptop and wrote an email to DeSilvius De at hillviewhigh.edu. It covered much of the same territory. I thought of Mrs. S. I thought if Mrs. S had been in the room while I was typing, she would have smelled hooky all over me. I set the email to arrive on her, on her office computer Thursday afternoon. Two days of unexplained absence I could get away with, but probably not three. My purpose was to give dad as much time at his retreat as I could. I could hope Miss, Mrs. C would call him when she got a, a, my email, but I knew she probably would. And he might be headed back then anyway. The real purpose was to tell as many people as possible that I was going to Chicago. To that end, I called the cop shop and asked if Detective Gleason was there. He was. And I asked him if they had any leads in the home invasion at one Sycamore Street. I wanted to ask today because I'm thinking Mr. Bowditch's dog, I'm thinking Mrs. Bo Mr. Bowditch's dog to Chicago tomorrow. I found someone that, there who's done wonders with older dogs. Gleason told me there was nothing new, which was what I expected. I had taken care of the home invader myself, or so I hoped. Gleason wished me good luck with the old pooch. That was a wish I took to heart. Okay. All right, some good vocabulary in here, but uh, in the interest of time, I don't want to spend too much time going over things that you may not need to know or you may not be asking questions about. You can join and ask those questions and then we will take the time on those things. I did, I did want to make sure that you could understand the last phrase that he used, was there anything else? We No, we know hooky, we know what that means. We explained that last time. Okay, so the last thing he said is, that was a wish I took to heart. So take to heart is another idiomatic phrase. It's an expression. I think you can guess what it means though, right? That was a wish I took to heart. Mm -hmm. So Gleason told him good, good luck with his dog or with his old pooch, which is just a casual, cute way of calling a dog. And he said, I took that to heart, I, or that was, that was a wish I took to heart. When we take something to heart, it means that we really, really believe or agree with something. Mm -hmm. Or it has really, really deep meaning for us. We really, really feel and think about it deeply, right? So when we say take something to heart, it means to really think about it, really understand it, 
and really have a strong feeling about it. And he took Gleason's wish to heart because he really was hoping that he could heal or help Radar. So that even though everything else he said to Gleason wasn't true, the one thing that was true is that he needed good luck with Radar because his journey was about to begin. Okay, as you can see, my voice is beginning to fail. So we're going to finish this, this section, this, like section seven, and then that should get us to the end of this chapter. And then we'll start with the next chapter next week. Let's begin. That evening, I took three more of the new pills into Radar's child. I would give her three more tomorrow. There weren't many more left in the bottle, but maybe that was okay. I didn't know for sure what, we, what they were, but, had, but I had an idea they were doggy speed. They were shortening her life at the same time they were pepping her up. I told myself I just had to get her down the steps, and after that, well, I didn't know after that. My phone was working again, although I'd had to do hard reset to get it to show the right time. And around 7 o'clock, it rang. Dad was in the window. I turned on the TV and jacked the volume a little before answering it. Hey, Charlie, everything okay? It's fine. Climb any trees? He laughed. No trees. It's raining up here. A lot of rah, rah team spirit in instead. Oh, no. A lot of rah, rah team spirit instead. Insurance guy's gone wild. What are you watching? Sports center. Dog okay? Raids? She looked up from her rug. She's good. Still eating? Every bite of her dinner and licked the bowl. Glad to hear it. We talked a little more. He seemed unworried, so I guess I was putting on a good front. That made me glad and ashamed at the same time. I'll give you a call tomorrow night if you want. Nah, I might go out for burgers and a mini golf with a bunch of guys. And, and girls? Well, there might be girls present. I'll call you if something happens, like the house catches on fire. Sounds like a plan. Sleep well, Chip. You too. From where I was sitting, I could see the letter on the kitchen table. I didn't like lying to my dad, but didn't see any other choice. I was in, it was an extraordinary situation. I killed the TV and got ready to turn in at eight o'clock for the first time since forever. But I was planning on rising early. Soonest begun, soonest done, my mother used to say. Sometimes I couldn't exactly remember what she looked like without checking her picture, but I could remember all her little sayings. The mind is a weird machine. I locked up, but not because I was afraid of Polly. He probably knew where I lived, but he, but he had two broken hands and I had him done. He was also without money and ID. My guess was that he was already hitching to what he called cheap tie, where he tried to turn those four gold pellets into cash. If he was able to sell them at all, I thought he'd get, get, no, he'd get no more than 20 cents, 20 cents on the dollar, and that was all right with me. Awesome sauce. Every time I started to feel sorry for him or guilty about what I'd done, I thought of him pressing the barrel of his little gun against the back of my head and telling me not to turn around. It wouldn't be smart. I was glad I didn't kill him, though. There was that. I imagined myself closely in the, I don't know, one more time, sorry. I examined myself closely in the mirror as I brushed my teeth. I thought I looked the same as ever, which was sort of amazing after everything had happened. I rinsed out my mouth turned and saw Radar sitting in the bathroom doorway. I bent and ruffled the fur at the sides of her face. You want to go on an adventure tomorrow, girl? She thumped her tail, then went into the guest room and lay down at the foot of the bed. I double-checked my alarm to make sure it was set for 5 a.m., then turned off the light. I expected it would it would take a, take me a long time to go to, to sleep after the day's roller coaster ride. The day's roller coaster. One more time. Let me read that again. Hold on. <clears throat> I expected it would take a long time for me. One more time. I expected it would take a long time to go to sleep after the day's roller coaster ride, but I started to drift almost at once. 
I asked myself if I was really going to risk my life and certainly get into a shitload of trouble, both with my dad and at school, for an old dog who'd already had, in canine years, a hell of a good run. The answer seemed to be yes. But that wasn't all. It was the wonder of the thing, the mystery of it. I had found another world, for Christ's sake. I wanted to see the city with the green towers and find out if it was Oz, only with a terrible monster, Gog Magog. At its heart, instead of a humbug projecting his voice from behind a curtain, I wanted to find the sundial and see if it actually did what Mr. Bowditch said it did. And you have to remember, I was 17, a prime age for both adventuring and foolish decisions. But yeah, mostly it was the dog. I loved her, you see. And I didn't want to let her go. I rolled over on my side and went to sleep. Okay. Okay, so now that bring that brings this chapter to an end. And as I suspected, it took just under 30 minutes to do it. And I, I, we're gonna to have to stop there. I apologize. If you were to join, certainly I would go for the full hour. It's no problem for me to be a little late to pick up my smartphone. But uh, since it's just me and this looks like it's a good place to start, you know, we've finished that altercation or that, that fight that he had uh, with his enemy. Now we've finished that part of the story. We're ready to go into a fully new part of the story, which means it's a great place to start to join the book club because really all of this we can put behind us and really start fresh with a fresh chapter. In chapter 13, the name is Calling Andy. Radar decides Stu and Gogier or Googier. All right, so I'm I'm guessing that this is this is talking about things that will happen when they get to the other world which they're going to do it early in the morning the next day. I'm not sure. But uh, basically, that's what we'll be talking about in the next event. So please do uh, join. I mean, really, this is a great time to join. We've rich, we really we, we kind of left behind a, a significant part of the story. But now where we're going is just it's such a new beginning that it's just well, it could be anything could happen. And all of us, and if, even if someone had been reading along for the last 12 chapters, still they would not be any better poised to understand what's going to happen next. So it is a good time to join. The adventure is still just beginning. And I, I know I posted a meme that said that the adventure is underway. Actually, no, it really it is still just beginning. And uh, so this is the time. Chapter 13 is where we really set off. The plot is kind of there. We understand what the plot is. But we really are going to now get underway with the action part of the story, I think, in Chapter 13. So hopefully I will see you for that. I hope that you do decide to join this or a similar type of event. This can be helpful in addition to your studies in addition to your English classes and things that you would learn. This is a low expense way of using the things that you've learned in school or in your conversation school or with your tutor or with your English coach. In addition to that, you may attend an event like this and get some real time practice reading real books with real English and having real discussions about it. Of course, if it's just me, you're just listening and you're not getting the full exercise. If you're really smart, what you want to do is pause after I finish one or two sentences and see if you can then read that sentence the same way. Try to keep the rhythm, try to match the sound, try to match the way the words blend together. That muscle training is what's going to make it more easy for you to speak or easier for you to speak fluently when you want to especially with those high frequency phrases. And high frequency phrases are just phrases that we use a lot. And we use them in regular conversation a lot, and we use them in books a lot. So it's always good to get practice with those in a book club like this. But that's all for now. We made it to 3.30. I'm going to have to call that an end and then head over to Machida and uh, pick up my smartphone. 
and then maybe do a little bit of shopping and make it back here in time for the book club at eight o'clock, which you are also welcome to join if you just contact us. You can contact us by way of the Facebook group. You can contact us on any of the social media platforms, Instagram, uh, uh, what is it, Threads and X, any of those. Uh, even I think of uh, Line Room, you can contact us on Line Room. There's always a way to reach us. And so we're very flexible with how money should be paid or anything like that. So you're welcome to join tonight's book club or perhaps tomorrow evening's book club. Or like I said, if you would like to start your own, maybe with a book that you would like to read, maybe something easier where I speak a little slower, then of course you can set up your own book club, invite your friends and let's see what happens, yeah? But for now, we'll have to call it, cut it short. It's a three to 3.30 event, unlike I advertised and not full hour, but next time we'll be back on track for the full hour. And I think three o'clock is still a good time because we still have some light. Uh, by four o'clock, maybe it will, will be much darker, but still, I think that twilight time is a good mood for this kind of story, right? So in any event, I will see you next week. Let's hope. In the meantime, do not hesitate to go out there and take part in the real English party that exists. This is not school. These are not lessons. This is real English. See you next time. Thank you.